This is lesson 96, VHDL example 64. And in this example, we'll write the VHDL programs for the data path and control unit for the GCD algorithm that we developed in lesson 94. You recall Euclid's GCD algorithm that we went over there. It had a while loop, and we realized that there was no while loop in VHDL, so we had to develop a data path and control unit, which we did in lesson 94. Here was the data path. You remember we had the three registers, X reg, Y reg, G reg. We had two subtractors, an equality detector, a comparator for the less than, and two multiplexes. So let's write a VHDL program for this data path. The inputs are clock and clear, uh, XM select, YM select for the multiplexers, and the load signals, X load, Y load, G load for the three registers. These five signals will come from the control unit. X in and Y in will be four bit numbers coming from the outside. GCD will be the output and then the equality flag and less than flag are outputs which will go to the control unit. So we'll need a component MUX2G, we'll use that for our multiplexer. We'll use our reg, this is our n-bit register, for the registers. Then we'll define these signals, x, y, x1, y1, x, m, y, that's x minus y, the output y minus x. So these are all 4-bit standard logic vectors. x minus y gets the sign x minus y. ymx gets the sign y minus x. We'll use this process to make our equality detector, just a process with x and y. If x equals y, equality flag equals 1, else equality flag equals 0. So that will give us our uh, equal flag. We'll make a little comparator here for our less than process x, y. If x is less than y, then the left, left less than flag is 1, else the less than flag is 0. Then we'll just port map the two muxes, mux 2g. This is where the inputs are x minus y and x in and the output is x1, the x register, and then going to the y register, the inputs will be y in and y1, or the outputs will be y1, the, the inputs will be y minus x and y in. ym select and xm select, the multiplexer select signals, remember come from the control unit. And then we have the three registers. We'll use reg, so we get three instances of those. They're all of size 4. The x register, the output will be x, and the input will be x1, and the load signal will be x1 load. For the y register, the output's y, input's y1, load signal is y load. And for the output register, the output is going to be GCD. The load signal will be G load. And the input will be X. So there's the data path. So that will implement this data path. And now we need to implement the state diagram for the control unit. We had this back in lesson 94. And you recall how we implement uh, state machines. We'll use a more machine. Inputs will be clock and clear. Go will be the input that goes one to start it. The equality flag, less than flag, will come from the data uh, from the data path. And then the five outputs, the two multiplexer select lines and the three register load lines will be outputs. So here's our more machine representation. The states are going to be start, input, test 1, test 2, update 1, update 2, and done. This is our usual state register. Uh, 
where on the rising edge of the clock the present state gets the next state and then we just go through the state diagram in the usual way we have present state go equality flag less than flag in the sensitivity list case present state when you're in the start if go is one we go to the input else we stay in the start state when you're in the input we'll always go to test one when you're in test one if the equality flag is one then we go to done else we'll go to test two when you're in test two if the less less than flag is one we will go to update one else we'll go to update two and when you're in update one you always go back to test one when you're in update two you always go back to test one and when you're in done we'll just stay in done so you'll notice that this loop here from test one essentially implements our while loop you see you're going to keep going around these state diagram here until x becomes equal to one in which case you, then you go to done and finally our C2 output process depends only on the present state remember we need to initialize all of our outputs to zero because they're combinational case present state when you're in the input state we want to load the two inputs so we need to set the two multiplexer select lines to one and x load and y load to one so that on the rising edge on the way to test one we will load the two inputs when you're in update one we want a y to be equal to y minus one well all we have to do is make sure that y load is one and then on the way back to test one y will get loaded with y minus x when you're in update two all we need to make sure is that x load is one so that in going from update two to test one x gets loaded with x minus y and when you're in done we'll just have g load one so we keep loading in uh, the answer GCD so we've now implemented the entire control unit and data pass so we need to put it together we'll call that uh, GCD so GCD is going to be both of these together the inputs are clock and clear which go to both the input go the input X in Y in and GCD out these are four bit uh, values so then we just need the component GCD data path so here's the component for the data path we just did here's the component for the control unit we just did we'll need the signals these are the signals that go between the data path and the control unit and then we just have to port map the data path and port map the control unit so this is all straightforward setting the component names to the corresponding signal names so we now have a GCD module that combines both the control unit and the data path and we can simulate that here's a test where we've picked X in and Y in to be C or 12 and 8 so we know that the greatest common divisor is 4 and this shows going through each of the states from input test 1 test 2 update 2 test 1 test 2 update 1 test 1 so we finally get to done and sure enough the GCD finally gets latched to 4 the answer we can now make a top level design so that you can download it to the FPGA board all we need is clock div We'll use a clock 25, a 25 megahertz clock. That'll be a Q0 in clock div. And our clock 190 to run X7 seg B. Here are the switches coming in. The, hot, the upper four bits of the switches, leftmost four bits will be X. The rightmost four switches will be Y. 
we'll bring those out to the LEDs and then the GCD 4-bit answer will be concatenated with uh, three hex zeros to form the 16-bit X so the rightmost uh, digit will display the answer and this is just the top level design M clock button switches DP the LEDs the A to G's and the A N's and then we have the component declarations for clock div for GCD and for the X7 seg BC we'll have the signals clock 25 clock 190 and clear signal X input to X7 seg BC we define it right here so the rightmost digit is the answer switches go to the LEDs clear is button 3 and then we have the usual port map clock div GCD and X7 seg BC so there's the top level design it will be this you should download this to the F, uh, your F, FPGA board and you'll set the switches to the values you want to compute the um, uh, you want to compute the GCD for and when you press button 0 we're connecting button 0 to go you press button 0 the greatest common uh, divisor should show up on the rightmost uh, seven segment display.